welcome to the next video lecture in this video lecture you will be introduced to the instruction set of 8051 when i say instruction set i'm talking about the assembly language instruction set now i'm not going to go over all the instruction set that are present in the sheet i'm just going to go over some of the important and the most frequently used ones uh, that we are going to practice in the next lecture okay I'm going to basically divide the instruction that I'm going to explain into several categories. The first category is a set of instructions called move, move C, move X. Okay. The next set of instructions are nothing but add. subtract with borrow, divide, divide, multiply, okay. The next group being C, J, N, E, D, J, N, E, Z. And the next category being J, Z. J N Z J C J N C and finally A jump L jump and S jump. So this is one cluster. This is another cluster, this is one, this is another one and this is one. So basically what is this move instruction uh, do or what is it meant for? Uh, the move instruction is basically to transfer slash copy the data from one location to another for that matter whether it is move or move c or move x they copy the data from one location to another depending upon from which location to where the command varies or you will use a specific command like move move c or move x so first let us see what is the first scenario the first scenario is, I have already told you that 8051 is a Harvard architecture where it has a separate data memory and separate code memory. So if the data transfer happens between data memory and registers, we will use move C, sorry, move, sorry. Whenever the data transfer happens between data memory and registers, we will use move okay so when does move c come into play whenever the data transfer happens between code memory and registers when you want to read a constant when you want to read uh, a set of uh, array of data from the code memory into registers we use move C so what happens to move X then move X is also something very similar in the fact that it's same as move same as move but instead of internal memory data memory it is used for external data memory that is whenever there has to be an exchange of data between the registers and the external memory we use move x we use move x so the attribute is same as that of move except that 
Here the data memory refers to internal memory. In case of move x, it refers to external memory. Is that clear? So move, move c and move x. Okay, next what we will do is, we will try to understand the function of add, subtract, division, multiplication. Okay. Now, so let's go for the first command, add. As we all know, addition of two operands. So when I say add operand 1 comma operand 2, what it does is it adds both the operands. Now in case of controllers or processors or whatever it is, always the operands out of the two operands, one can be immediate whereas the other has to be in some memory location. When I say memory location, it could be any of the registers, accumulator or data memory. The reason why I gen generically specified as memory location is because uh, the registers, the accumulator, the data memory, I mean they are all mapped to the data memory. You can find the address locations of the accumulator and the register all mapped in the data memory. That's why I use the name yeah, memory location in a generic fashion. So as far as the syntax goes, it's going to be add accumulator comma r1, add r1 comma accumulator, add r3 comma accumulator and so on. So what does this mean? The contents in A is added along with the contents in R1. What about the uh, result? Since AD51 being an accumulator based architecture, result is automatically stored in the accumulator. Okay. So similarly in this case also it is R1 plus A and the result is automatically by default stored in the accumulator. Okay. Say for example, I am moving the number 5 in the accumulator and in register 1, I am moving the number 2. So when I execute the command add a comma r1, so what happens is 5 and 2 are added, the result is 7 and once this instruction is executed, immediately after this instruction is executed, the content in the accumulator 5 is erased and overwritten by the result. So the new content becomes 7. You cannot hold back the old content unless you want to copy this to some other register before this addition takes place. Is that clear? Now one more thing I want to specify here is as far as addition is concerned, since uh, microcontroller, I mean 8051 is an accumulator based architecture, accumulator must be one of the operand in any of the data manipulation instructions. So that means if I'm going to write add R1 comma R2, you will get a error while assembling your code, while translating your code because the assembler or the translator does not accept this logic because 8051 is an accumulator based architecture. So always accumulator must be one of the operand, whether it is addition, subtraction, division or multiplication. Is that clear? Now let's look at this command sub. Now this is for subtract with borrow. That's why we have S B B subtract with borrow. So what happens is as usual sub B A comma R1 sub B you know R1 comma A whatever. So here A is subtracted from R1 or the contents of A is sub, I mean contents of R1 is subtracted from A and the result 
is stored back in the accumulator. Now what is the significance of this borrow? Very simple. If A is greater than R1, then no issues. If A is less than R1, automatically the subtraction is performed and the borrow is taken into account automatically. In some controllers, you will not have this option. You have to include that option. But in 8051 instruction set, this comes as a default. Okay, that's with subtraction. Here again, accumulator must be one of the operand. You cannot operate on two uh, re registers directly. Okay. Now, the next two mathematical operators that we are going to look at is div1, mul. This is for division and this is for multiplication. Now why I am dealing these two together is for one reason because as far as div and, multi div and mul are concerned, you cannot have any other registers other than these two specific registers. This is called accumulator. We already know that. This is called, uh, you can call it a secondary accumulator or another register. Okay. As far as division and multiplication is concerned, only these two will come into play. That is, I can say div AB or mul AB. I cannot say div AR1 or div a R2 or mul R1 R2 mul A R1. All these things are not accepted as far as 8051 assembly is concerned. So it is going to be div A B mul A B. So these two operators or these two registers must be used when you are acting on division and multiplication. So the two operands which you want to uh, you know use in division or get multiplied must be present in these two registers before this instruction is being executed is that right for example if i want to do 5 divided by 2 what i have to do is i have to first move a comma hash to move b comma sorry uh, move a comma hash 5 move b comma hash 2 so what this does is the number 5 is moved into a number 2 is moved into b now if i say div a b 5 will be divided by 2 if i want to do 5 multiplied by 2 i have to simply say mul a b again in this condition whenever the division takes place automatically the result is stored in a that is the reminder and the quotient goes in b got it in multiplication, the A, the value in A and value in B are multiplied and the result is stored in A. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's look at the next two instructions, CJNE and DJNEZ. Now as far as CJNE is concerned, it's called compare jump if not equal to so this is c j n e so as the name suggests it is going to compare what it is going to compare obviously you need two things to compare so operand one operand two will be compared and it will jump to the location specified by the user if operand 1 is not equal to operand 2. Okay, so how the syntax of CJNE is going to be? It is going to be CJNE. Okay, then this is going to be operand 1, then operand 2, then you have to give the address where you want it to jump. Okay. So what happens is in this case operand 1 is compared to operand 2 if they are not equal it will jump to this address if they are equal it will continue with the next instruction for example let's try out something 
okay so you move a comma hash 2 move b comma hash 3 move r1 comma hash 5 then c j n e <coughs> a comma hash 3 loop 1 add a comma r1 then i say loop 1 okay then i have couple of other statements which i am not writing then i say loop 1 and then I say uh, sub a comma r1. So what will happen is all these instructions will be executed. When this comes, a and 3 will be compared. So a is 2 and we are comparing it with 3. Obviously, they are not equal. So in this case, it will jump to the address specified by you, loop 1, where a and r1 will be subtracted. For example, instead of 3, if I write 2 here, now what will happen? A is 2. I am comparing it with 2. So they are equal. So instead of jumping to loop 1, this instruction will be executed. So that is the concept behind CJNE. Is that clear?